Hi, and welcome to Noble Character Crafts. My name is Amy, and I'm coming to you from Eastern Nebraska, where I live with my husband and our five children. Today is Friday, March 24th, 2023. A huge welcome to any new or returning viewers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoy this episode. This is a channel all about my crafty life, and today I have crocheting and knitting to share with you all. You can find me online on Instagram, at Noble Character Crafts, and you can get in contact with me through my email at noblecharactercrafts at yahoo.com. I have a few finished objects to share with you all today. The first one is this crocheted shawl that I was working on last time I recorded, and this was such a fun project. It worked up so quickly. It was just so engaging to work through the different colors that I had, and I really just really enjoyed working on this project. This pattern is a free pattern. I watched a YouTube tutorial by Ninja Bunny Crochet and the shawl is called Time in a Bottle Shawl. And it is crocheted using worsted weight yarn. I used some yarn that was gifted to me by Danielle of Midwest Stitches. This is a Lion Brand ZZ Twist yarn but this has been discontinued. I had five different colorways that I worked up into this shawl, but I do not have the titles or the names of any of these colorways, unfortunately, but they are all worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarn. I used a J six millimeter hook for this project, and I just used up the yarn as, you know, the, each color that I had, I used it up as much as I could until you know it ran out and then I just changed the color whenever I ran out. I mean, I didn't do it in the middle of a row, but otherwise I just used it up as much as I could and just had little balls left over at the end. In fact, the very last colorway that I used, I had just a, I thought I wasn't gonna be able to make it and I was gonna have to rip back um, two rows, I thought, because you wanna end, it's a two row repeat, this pattern and you wanna end with this shell stitch at the end so that it has this nice scalloped border. And I was afraid I was gonna to have to rip out the last two rows because I was so, so close to running out, but thankfully I had about a yard left of yarn, so that was great. I just ordered the colors that I had according to the amount that I had, so of course I had the least of this first gray color, and then I just measured the other yarns by weight to see what colors I had the most of and use them up accordingly. And I just love how it turned out. It, again, was just so enjoyable to work up. And since I was using the different colors, you know, I just wanted to use up each color and see how it would look with, you know, I was excited to work up the new colors. So it worked up really quickly. It's a really nice, generous size. I don't remember what the designer recommends, how big the designer recommended making it. So I'm not sure if mine is bigger or smaller than the recommended size, but like I said, I just used up what I had until it ran out and it turned out to be such a nice size. I'm really happy with it. I'm going to be gifting this to my church's prayer shawl ministry. So hopefully it will go off to somebody that will enjoy it. I can definitely see myself making this pattern again though because yeah it would just work up so well in so many different colors of course you could just do it in a solid color or it's super fun in multicolors as well and I think it would work up if it you know these are all solid colors but I think the pattern would look equally beautiful in a variegated or anything like that so you can see it can be worn this way really comfortably too. It's so, you know, nice and big that it just worked up really well. I should try to figure out how many rows I did so that you could replicate it. So even I could replicate it. I should mark that down. I'm going to count and I'm going to put it down here on the bottom, both for your sake and my sake. <laughs> In the future, I want to know how many rows I did so that if I want to make another one and I want it to be at least this big, I want to know how many rows I did. So I'll put that down below. But I just think it's great. I really love how it turned out. And hopefully whoever gets it loves it too and can enjoy it. 
I think it's great. I would keep it on, but I'm actually warm, which is crazy. It's supposed to get up in the 50s, I think, today, but I'm warm. I don't even have my heater on in here. <laughs> so I'm going to take it off. Ooh, I'm surprised that it's that warm. So anyway, really, really enjoyed this project. I'm so happy with how it turned out. My next finished object is these beautiful socks. I absolutely love how they turned out. This pattern is called Morning Walk Socks by Kay Litton of Crazy Sock Lady Designs. And I am, I have the goal of knitting through my Knit Picks Felici stash this year. So I'm keeping up with that goal. This is my March pair. The colorway is called Treehouse and I just absolutely love how these turned out. I cast on the medium size, which is a 64 stitch count and did the ribbing for, I think, 18 rounds before I switched to the main body or the leg of the sock when I just wanted to switch when the color striping switched. And then I just worked up the pattern with this color striping. Here, I'll turn it so you can see it better. This runs down the front of the sock. It's so beautiful. I just love these stitches. They're so fun to make. And I think it works really well with this color striping. And then the back of the sock is just plain stockinette. I am not sure how many repeats I did <laughs> of the legs. I just, I just knit them until they're long enough <laughs> for my liking. I usually do about 70 rounds, so I think that's probably what I did. Um, but again, I wanted just to go until it was long enough, and then I wanted to switch to the heel when the, when the color striping switched as well. For the heels, I used a little scrap of yarn that I had left over. This is by Willow Tree Yarn, and it is called the um, Keeper of the Fields is the colorway. And I just thought that that colorway worked so well with the color stripes. I really like how that looks. So I just followed the pattern completely other than the fact that I put in my slip stitch section on the ball of my foot, which I do on all of my own socks because that helps to prevent getting holes in that section of the sock. So I just do the same idea as what you would do for a slip stitch heel flap on the first round on the bottom of the sock only, I do slip one, knit one across, and then this next round I just knit across and I repeat that for about 30 rounds on the right before my toe decreases. So for my socks, I knit 80 rounds before the toe decreases. So I do 50 rounds in plain stockinette on the bottom, well, including the gusset decreases and everything, but just plain stockinette for 50 rounds. And then for the last 30 rounds of the foot, I add in that slip stitch detail and then do my toe. And I, no matter which socks I make for myself, I'm typically always using Kay's instructions for heel flap and gusset decreases and her toe. So that's no different for me. No matter what pattern I'm, or no matter what socks I'm making, I always use her instructions pretty much because they're my favorite. So anyway, I am so pleased with how these turned out. I absolutely love them. Knit Picks Felici, if you're not familiar, and the Willow Tree Yarn sock bases are fingering weight, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, and I knit these on US zero two millimeter needles. I'm so pleased that I'm keeping up with my goal of working through my Knit Picks stash, and I'm excited to continue to do that throughout the year. And I'm also, I've also decided that I'm going to be using Kay's patterns for my bleachy socks this year as well because I have several of her sock patterns that I haven't worked up yet so I want to work through those as well. I also have another stack of dish cloths that I've worked up since the last time I recorded and I've actually finished the yarn that I had in my stash that I wanted to work through for my make nine goal. So I had this dishcloth pattern on my make nine board and I wanted to work through some I love this cotton yarn that I had in my stash 
and I have finished it. So I've met another goal from my Make Nine board, which is awesome. This is the third project off of my Make Nine board, and it's the third month of the year, so I'm doing good. <laughs> Better than last year already, so that's great. <laughs> All right, so last time I recorded, I was working on one of these gold colors. Uh, the pattern that I use is called the Easy Classic Easy Knit Dishcloth, and it's a free pattern by Carolyn Stanton, also known as Carousel Design. I do modify the pattern by using smaller needles. I use US 6 4 millimeter needles, and then I only increase to 52 stitches before I decrease. I've also made a modification at the very end of the pattern. Last time I told you that I only decrease to, until there's four stitches left. And then, I don't know if I mentioned, I probably didn't because somebody asked in the comments, do I, what do I do then? Do I bind off those four stitches? Or I guess the person had assumed that I just bound those off. But actually what I was doing was just cutting a tail and then weaving my needle through those last four stitches and then sewing it up. But after the person commented and asked me what I was doing, then I thought, well, why aren't I just binding those stitches off? That would probably be an even neater finish to the dishcloth. And so now I have started only decreasing to five stitches. And then on that last row that I would had finished with, I've just been binding off by, you know, passing the stitch over itself, over the one in front of it you know what I mean, a regular bind off on that last row as I'm decreasing to four stitches. So I knit one and then I slip slip knit and then I pass the stitch over and so on. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, I've just started binding off those last four stitches basically. And I do like how that looks better. And I feel like it's maybe a more secure bind off. Anyway, I got this gold one done. So these are all, I love this cotton yarn, which is worsted weight, 100% cotton yarn. These two are in the gold colorway. And then these two are in the olive colorway. And then I had one skein in my stash that was just kind of a remnant leftover. I don't know what brand it was or colorway or anything. It's just this dark brown color. And I had enough to do one dishcloth in this. And I just thought it looked really nice with all the other colors that I have, um, that I had in this grouping. And when I gift dishcloths, I always, you know, make a group of three dishcloths. And so I'll kind of, you know, pair different colors together that I think look nice. And I thought that this brown would go with the other colors that I had in this group. And then with the leftovers, all of my little scraps, I was able to make three scrappy dishcloths, which are just my favorite. They're so much fun to make. So this is the first one that I did. I just used up what I had and did some striping, which was fun. I just really love how these scrappy ones work up. They're super fun. I, I made these last three in record speed because it was just so much fun to see the different colorways stripe up together. And then the last one I did all stripey. I just think they're so fun. So I'm excited. I have a total of 15 dishcloths that I was able to make using up all of these yarns. And so I'll be able to make five sets with three dishcloths in each set. And I'm so excited to have worked through another one of my goals for my make nine board. So that's exciting. And I'm all done with that for a while. I do still have some cotton in my stash that I would like to work through at some time in the year, maybe before Christmas, especially because those are such great gifts to give at Christmas time. I do give them periodically throughout the year as well when the opportunity arises to give a gift like that. But especially at Christmas time, I end up giving a lot of dishcloths away at that time more than any other time during the year. So I'll probably work up some more dishcloths throughout the year, but not immediately. All right, on to my works in progress. The first one I want to share with you is the Rainbow Diamond Baby Blanket. Rainbow Diamonds Baby Blanket by Judy Bolin. Last time I recorded, 
I had crocheted all, let's see, I had gone from the center out until I got to this light green round. So the way that this blanket is constructed, or the, at least the way that I'm constructing it, is I am crocheting these little granny squares, which are two round granny squares. And then I am using a whip stitch to seam them together through the back loop. That is a deviation from the original pattern. The original pattern was designed to be a no sew join as you go method. But since I was doing a lot of color management, I decided just to seam my pieces together because I wasn't sure how many squares I was going to be able to get out of each color that I had up here. Here's the pamphlet that I got this pattern from. It's right here on the cover. Also, these patterns are designed for sport weight yarn and I'm using worsted weight yarn. So I did change my hook size as well, I'm sure. The original one calls for um, a size D three millimeter hook and I'm using a size H five millimeter hook. So when I started it, I assumed that it would turn out quite a bit bigger. I don't know what the actual original size is. It's supposed to be 40 by 40 inches. I haven't measured mine yet. I should do that. I will do that and I'll put it down below again because I'm curious how much bigger it is. I was thinking when I had, last time when I showed this to you, I had it to the point where it was going to be, it wasn't going to get any wider than I had it last time I showed you. And I thought that that looked good if not even a little bit small for a baby blanket but now that I've added to it I'm thinking it might be turning out pretty big for a baby blanket but that's okay too it'll be fine it'll be a nice blanket that whoever gets this I don't know who's getting this I'm just making it to have in my gift basket to give to people I don't really keep them in a basket but you know what I mean <laughs> anyway in my stash to give to somebody Whoever gets this could just, you know, lay it down on the floor and let their baby play on it like a play mat type thing. So it's okay if it's a little bit big, I think. Anyway, I have just used up, again, all uh, worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarn from my stash. And so some of them I had very little amounts and others I've had, I have quite a bit of the colors. But as you can see, they're all shades of gray and green that I'm using and I love how it's turning out. I have added all the way around one more round of this light gray color since the last time I recorded, and then I have finished off one corner. So here you can see, maybe, get an idea of what one fourth of the blanket is right here. I really like how it's looking. I think it's super cool. And then it will be finished off with a border as well. And I have enough of this light green color, same as right here, to do the border with this yarn. So I'm excited to see how this comes along. I really have almost all of the squares made. I just need to make a few more of this light green color and just a few more of this dark gray color, but it's only like around 15 more squares, I think, that I need to make, so that will work up quickly. These little tiny squares do work up super quickly since they're only two rounds. I've timed myself and it takes about two to three minutes to make one. So they work up pretty quickly. And then seaming them together, I really enjoy that process. I know a lot of people don't, but I really don't mind it. It seems to go pretty quickly for me and I am enjoying it. It's really, you know, really relaxing for me. I find it really relaxing. And then I've also been sewing in my ends every time I, every time I add in, you know, a section. For example, I, I had been going all the way around the perimeter of the blanket, adding in squares, and then I would weave in all the ends after I added a new color. And then I think from now on, I'm just gonna be adding in one corner at a time. And then after I finish that corner, I'll weave in the end, so that's what I did on this first corner, but even the back side I think looks pretty cool. And this is another project from my Make Nine list, so it's coming along really well as well. 
All right, next in this bag that I made myself is another crochet project that I shared last time. This is using up some more of the Lion Brand ZZ Twist yarn that Danielle had gifted to me. And I have a total, I believe, of four skeins of this yarn in this bright coral color. And I saw this free pattern online and I just thought it was so beautiful and I thought it would work well for this yarn. So this pattern is called the Chloe Sideways Shawl by Claire M of Truly Crochet. Last time I recorded, I was right here where this Shell Progress Keeper is marking. So I have worked from there to this end. And this is pretty much to the halfway mark. I've used up two of the four skeins so far. So it will be twice this length when it's finished. And I am really enjoying it. I'm using a eye, an eye hook, which is 5.5 millimeters. And again, this yarn is worsted weight, 100% acrylic yarn. And I think it's so pretty. I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna be doing with this shawl, if I'm gonna be keeping it or gifting it, but I just think the pattern is so pretty. This is a three row repeat and it's really enjoyable. I really, really love working on this one as well. I'm holding this skein in this, I don't know what this is called, a cake. Oh, I know they have a name and now I can't think of what they're called, but anyway, a cake cozy, yarn cozy, I bet that's what it's called. And this is by Danielle of Midwest Stitches as well. She uh, sent that along with all of this yarn and uh, along with a project bag, which I'm using. So I'll show you that in a little bit. I don't know the colorway of this one either, but it's this beautiful coral, beautiful coral colorway. And yeah, that's just a really fun project. Okay, next is my project that I'm holding in this beautiful bag that is by Trisha of Joy in the Stitches. She gifted me this bag as well. And this is the, another project from my Make Nine list. Last time I recorded, I shared with you my trouble that I have been having with the Whisper Cardigan by Heidi May of the Velvet Acorn. Originally, I had been using some different yarn that was a fingering weight yarn held double with mohair, and my gauge was turning out too large, and therefore my cardigan was turning out too large. And so I tried to rip that out, and it wasn't working very well <laughs> because the mohair would not rip out easily. And so my friend Tina did end up taking that project and I believe she is working on trying to unravel it, but I told her if it's too hard, don't worry about it. But she enjoys untangling yarn and so she was up for the challenge. I did hear from one of uh, a commenter on the last video that crochet actually is more difficult to rip out than knitting when using mohair because of the way that the yarn wraps around itself, I guess. I don't quite understand how that works, but according to the viewer that commented, she said that actually it is more difficult to rip out crochet than knitting. So that was news to me. Anyway, I decided to start this project again using some different yarn. Since I wasn't, I, I, want, I didn't wanna use mohair because I don't like the idea of not being able to rip out my project if it's not working out and just having that yarn wasted. Like it, maybe Tina can rip out that yarn, but I don't want to have to have her rip out every single project that I try to crochet with mohair. Anyway, I decided just to use some different yarn held singly instead of holding mohair double. And so I have a sweater's quantity of this Wool of the Andes and this Sport Weight, which is 100% non-superwash Peruvian Highland wool. And this is in the Pompous Heather colorway which I love this colorway so much. I just love the heathered 
yarns in the Will of the Andes line through Knit Picks because, and the um, palette line as well, very similar. They have a lot of heathered colorways in that as well. And I just think they're so beautiful. Can you see all the color variation in there? It's just so beautiful. I love the heathered colorways in this yarn. Since the original pattern calls for fingering weight and mohair held double, that generally is considered to be DK weight, but I think more of two fingering yarns held double to be DK weight. And that's what I have found when working with fingering weight held double. So since the mohair is lace weight, I think that it would probably be a little bit less than DK weight, and but I could be wrong, of course. But anyway, both that and the fact that my gauge was turning out too large on my last attempt, I decided that I'll, I would try this sport weight because that's in between fingering and DK and I thought I would probably be okay. I actually did a gauge swatch this time before starting this cardigan. Here it is. And I did meet gauge. This is in half double crochet, US terms. And I got gauge using, I did go down in my hook size as well to a G four millimeter hook. And I got gauge, which is 18 and a half stitches to four inches. So I was super happy with that. And I have restarted this cardigan. And I'm knitting, or I'm crocheting the small slash medium size. This pattern comes in lots of sizes starting from children through adult sizes. And I haven't gotten too far into it, but it starts with the ribbing. For the ribbing, I used a smaller hook, which is a D 3.25 millimeter hook. And the ribbing is made using front and back double crochet or post double crochet stitches. And then the majority of this is worked using half double crochet stitches, except there is a few rows where these there's these pretty twisted stitches using double crochet stitches. Again, US terms. So again, I'm not very far into this project, but I'm a little nervous about it already. I tried it on yesterday and it doesn't look like it's laying very well. Look how roughly it is. I don't know. Even when I laid it, even if I lay it flat, it doesn't, I would think that it should lay flat. You know, when I've made yoked knitted sweaters before, they lay flat when they're, you know, they lay flat and then they fit nicely. This one's so roughly, look at, I don't think that's gonna work. But what do you think? I need your advice. You guys were so great in commenting on my last video regarding my Felix cardigan, which I will talk about next. But what about this one? Do you think it, I'm assuming that this is not gonna work out. Do you think that it will? Should I keep crocheting this and see if it lays flat or what? I'm feeling like I'm ready to give up on this pattern at this point because I don't know, I'm just not happy. If I lay it flat, my hair is in the way. I should have my hair up for this, I guess. Anyway, if I lay it flat so that it fits, you know, flat on me, I have all this extra material. See, I think it should lay more like that, but then I have this big amount. So if that's the case, do I need to go down several sizes? I don't know. I think if this isn't gonna work out, I'm just giving up on this one. But if you think that it will eventually work itself out, if I keep going, let me know. But I'm thinking it's not. I don't, I want, I, I, I'm curious as to why it isn't laying flat. When I made this pattern with the mohair and fingering weight held double, I made it, I had gone further than this and I kept trying it on and it was fitting really well until the last time I tried it on. But, you know, it was about, I think about this long before I realized that it was going to be too big. 
yeah, so I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm just making it fit without, I, I guess the neck should be wider than that, but still, I don't know. It's still not laying very well, even if I make the neck wider. Maybe it's better that way. I don't know. <laughs> I still don't think it's great. Yeah, it's still super roughly. I don't know. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. If you think there's hope in continuing with this or if it's hopeless. <laughs> but I mean, if it is, it's not a big deal. It's, it's okay. I'll use that yarn definitely for something. I had it planned. I had planned to use this yarn for a different sweater project anyway. So it's not a big deal. It's not like I had bought that yarn specifically for this pattern or anything. It was just in my stash. Anyway, okay, on to my Felix cardigan. It is being held in this bag that I made myself. And again, thank you to those of you that commented. There were several people on both sides saying, my issue, if you didn't watch my last episode, is that I started making the Felix cardigan and I started making the second size and I felt like it was just turning out too big for my taste. I understand that the Felix cardigan is designed to be oversized, but I just realized when trying it on that I didn't think I was going to like it being as oversized as it was coming out to be. I have some oversized cardigans in my wardrobe that I do wear quite often, but I wear them more as lounge wear or just, you know, I'm at home and I just want to throw something on and I don't feel nice. I don't feel like I look very nice when I'm wearing them. They're just worn for warmth and comfort. And I really wanted this sweater to be something that I could wear over something when I wanted to look more put together and nice, if that makes sense. So I didn't want this, I don't want this sweater to be just a every day around the house kind of relaxing type of sweater. I wanted this to be a sweater that I could wear maybe to church or going out to eat or something like that. And it would be more of a nice sweater that I would feel more dressed up in, I guess. And so that's why I was kind of thinking that I wanted it to be more of a fitted look because I just like that look when looking more presentable, I guess. I don't know. I guess the oversized look isn't something that I feel very put together in. But that's just, of course, my personal taste. One of the commenters, my friend Michelle, suggested that I not rip out my first attempt, but just start knitting the smaller size. That way, if I decided that the larger size was going to be better in the long run, I wouldn't have wasted ripping out my work that, you know, maybe I'd start making the small size and then realize, no, that's not what I want either. I do want the larger size and then I wouldn't have wasted that knitting. And I was planning on doing that until I revisited the pattern after having had this project on hold for a while and then realized that all of the sizes start off with the same stitch count and you just don't make as many raglan increases for the larger sizes, which meant that I would have had to start all over and do the exact same thing that I had already done. And so then I just tried my cardigan on again and I realized that I really wasn't happy with how it was fitting and it would save me a lot more time, assuming that it'll turn out the way I like it, <laughs> if I just rip back and I would just go to the spot where I should have stopped increasing for the raglan increases in order to make the smaller size. So that's what I did. Just yesterday, I decided to rip it back and go to the stop ripping back where it would be to the point where the smallest size stops increasing the raglan increases. The yarn that I'm using was gifted to me by a viewer of this channel named Joan. This is by Oltex Carrie Tweed, color number seven. It's 15% kid mohair, 15% mohair, 40% acrylic, and 30% wool. And it is, I believe, a worsted weight in this gray tweed. And 
Another benefit of making this small size is that I have more confidence that I'm not gonna be running out of yarn. So that's another good thing. So last time I recorded, I had knit, I think about two inches after the sleeve separation. And I ripped back to where this cute progress keeper is marking. My cousin Allie made and gifted this progress keeper to me. Sweet little cactus plant. So you can see that I did not have to rip back all the way. I was able to save all of this knitting, which includes short rows and all of the raglan increases. Short rows are not my favorite thing to do. I'm, I like that they're in this pattern. I like the way that cardigans and sweaters fit when they have short rows, but I just don't love doing that section of knitting garments. So I was, that was another thing that just motivated me not to start all over again because I didn't want to have to go through all of that process again. So anyway, I was happy to just be able to rip back to this point and it worked really, really well. I was able to pick up all the stitches and had the perfect stitch count. So that was awesome because that's nerve wracking for me having to rip back and afraid I'm gonna, you know, I'm afraid I'm gonna lose stitches and so forth. This yarn really holds the stitches. It doesn't unravel easily. So that's great. And even though this has quite a bit of mohair in it, it was absolutely no problem to rip it back at all. It ripped back very easily. So as you can see, I have already worked past the sleeve separation again, and I'm so happy with how it's fitting now. So I'm so grateful for that. I am knitting this on US 9 5.5 millimeter needles. And again, I'm making the smallest size now. So, so happy that I changed it. It's so much better for me. Okay, again, it's still gonna have the button band, so there's gonna be a little bit of extra room here, but I still have plenty of positive ease. So I'm very, very happy with the fit now. I think it's great. I'm gonna be so much happier with this, I think, so. I um, am wondering though, I, again, I know this pattern is supposed to be oversized, but I'm not a super small person. I'm just, you know, I'm tall, I'm five foot 10, and I'm just not petite in any way. I'm, I'm bigger than the average girl. I'm as tall as the average man, I think. <laughs> so I don't know, if you're a smaller woman and you don't like oversized garments, I don't think that this pattern would work for you, which is unfortunate because the smallest size fits me and I'm not the smallest woman by any means. So I don't know, that is just something to consider, I guess. But I, I know a lot of people love oversized garments and they're in style and I just don't, I don't know, feel com as comfortable in them for looking nice, in my opinion, of course. But anyway, I'm super happy with how this is turning out now. I think it is going to be so wearable and it's obviously going to go with so much. I usually don't love the color gray on me, but I kind of like this. I think I like this a lot and I think I'll probably wear it a lot. Maybe it's just that it has the tweed and that really helps it to be more interesting than just plain gray. I think it's great. I'm so excited about this now and I think it will work up pretty quickly now that I'm on a roll and happy with how it's working up. So, So I don't think I'm making any modifications to it now that I'm on the small size. So far, I think, yeah, I think I'm completely following the pattern at this point. Probably won't until the end because I usually always do something <laughs> different, but right now I'm following the pattern so far. All right, I have two more works in progress. The first one is being held in another bag that I made myself. And I am making another pair of socks for myself. And I have been planning these socks for quite a while. I don't remember when in January I made a pair of socks 
using some yarn that my cousin dyed for the both of us and we did some slip stitch socks and I really loved working up those socks and I wanted to make another pair using just some scraps or mini skeins and that is what I've got going on here. So I am so happy with how they're turning out. I cast on 60 stitches using US 0 2 millimeter needles. I always use Chowgu red lace needles for my projects. And I did 20 rounds of two by one ribbing, so knit two, purl one. And then I've started working into this slip stitch pattern. So whenever I change colors, I do a slip one, knit two pattern for two rounds and then I do eight more rounds for a total of 10 rounds in each color stripe, which only takes about two grams per sock to do that. So that's great. And I'm just using lots of different colors. All, are, all of them are gonna be pretty much semi-solid or tonal or solid colored yarns. Some of them are hand dyed, some of them are commercial yarns but I'm just using up lots of different colors for these. And I'm loving how they are working up. They're so much fun and really enjoyable to work up. This is another progress keeper that my cousin Allie made. All right, and then my last work in progress is another pair of socks. This pair of socks is being held in this beautiful bag from Danielle of Midwest Stitches. Just a reminder that Danielle has a coupon code for any viewers of this channel. You can enter code NCC10 at checkout and receive 10% off your order throughout the entirety of the year. So thank you again, Danielle, for that generous coupon code and for gifting me this beautiful bag. I just love it so much. So it came along with that um, yarn cozy that I showed you earlier. It kind of coordinates with this bag. Anyway, my friend Tina came over earlier this week to get my first attempt at the Whisper cardigan to frog it for me. And she was talking to me about a friend of hers that um, she has recently had over to her house. And this friend's name is Faith. And she has commented on Tina's socks that I have knitted for her and how much she loves them. And... I said to Tina, well, I'll make her a pair if she wants. And she said, what? She was really surprised that I was willing to make her a pair of socks, which how could you be, Tina? I mean, you know I love <laughs> knitting and gifting things. So if somebody's going to appreciate when I knit them, I will knit them anything they want. Anyway, um, so I had Tina go through my stash and pick out some yarn that she thought Faith would like. And she picked out this yarn, which is by Regia four ply and it is in the Gerbera, 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 like a Gerbera daisy, Gerbera colorway. I just wrote that on there because it's not on their tags, but um, also colorway number 4463. This is 75% virgin wool, 25% polyamide yarn. And I have started Faith's Socks. So I again cast on 60 stitches because Tina said that her shoe size is the same as mine and Tina's. We both wear the same size and then Faith also has the same shoe size. So that's easy. I'll know they'll fit her that way. So that's great. So again, I cast on 60 stitches using US 0 2 millimeter needles. And again, I did two by one ribbing for, well, I was only going to do it for 20 rounds, but you can, I'm not sure how this yarn is going to stripe. And at the 20 round mark, I was about three rounds into this color this colorful stripe. And I thought, well, I'll just finish that colorful stripe before I start the plain stockinette, which I'm going to be doing for the leg of the sock. I'm just gonna do plain stockinette for these. But it kept going, this colorful stripe kept going. And I, got to 25 rounds and I was like, well, I guess I should stop doing, I thought it was going to end any time now because see these first colorful stripes are much shorter, but this one is super long. So 
I just started work after 25 rounds, I started working plain stockinette and I've done maybe five or six rounds, five rounds in that. And the colorful stripe is still going. Oh, is it gonna change? No, it's still going. It's still going, I don't know when it's gonna end. So anyway, that's the fun of striped, you know, self-striping yarn is that you just really sometimes don't know how it's gonna turn out. Again, I, this isn't the first time that I've been very fortunate to get my socks to match. I love it when my socks match. I would be very disappointed if they didn't match because I just think that looks so much nicer. But I just happened to get these to match because again, I didn't realize that the color stripes, the stripes were gonna be varying in width, but these are matching, so that's great. I'm so happy with that. That's not the first time that that's happened to me where I really realized that I was fortunate to get that to match up, not knowing really how the color stripes were going to sequence. Anyway, these are gonna be super simple and easy to work on anytime, because like I said, just doing plain stockinette, so they'll be very, very easy to work up. That is all that I have to share with you all today. I hope that you enjoyed watching. I would really appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet. I hope you all are doing really well. Thanks again for watching and take care, everybody. Bye-bye.